Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Kelly's with us today. Kelly Copeland, our sweet daughter, is here, and she's sharing some things with us from the Word of God. You don't want to miss it. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you, Mother. That's a blessing to be here. Well, we enjoy hearing you expound the Scriptures. Well, we're, it may feel like we're covering some things that we've talked about in 2016 in some of the broadcasts, but because um, I'm talking about shame, which I've talked about, I'm talking about the woman at the well, which I've talked about, but sort of headed in a further, a deeper direction. And wanna, I, I just want to start here. So I'm not really expounding like I have. If you're interested in this and shame's really been a problem for you, you might go back and look into uh, some of the broadcasts that we did last year because I feel like God is taking the wrappers off of shame. He told me, uh, gosh, I guess two years or so now ago, he said to me that shame was crippling the church. And I really hadn't heard a lot about shame. And it's so funny that since I started talking about it, it's like the Lord started having other people talk about it all at the same time. Creflo's preaching about it. And mm. I mean, I, it, I just feel like God is attacking it, and it uh, because it's stopping people yeah, from doing what it, it He's called them to do. You. It's stealing relationship. It's stealing. That's a good word, Mom. Stealing His presence out of your life. It's filter. It's a filter. Today, I, I hope to get to describing how it works in your life. That's the interesting. How hi hidden shame works. So, Unrepented things in your life really is what, after you repent, mm -hmm. you, you don't need shame. Well, once you take it out and give it to the Lord, it's shame. you're done let with it, it. Let the Word change you. The way, the way Satan's been operating on people, though, is he's making them shame. What we're going to talk about this week, he's, he's causing people to be ashamed of things that they shouldn't be ashamed of. Even... Um, it's, it, we'll get to that. I don't okay. want to jump ahead, but I just I'm like there's so much I want to say. Let's so get started. I know. Okay, so we talked about the rich young ruler, yeah. and really we're talking about two things that are keeping people from the presence of God, like He wants to be in our lives. It's like keeping us out of His presence, keeping Him out of our presence. Now, yes, He's in our heart. I'm not talking about that we're not going to heaven. Um, this girl, the, the rich young ruler missed an invitation to what Jesus said called the kingdom of heaven. That's like having to live, that's like being a citizen of a great mighty kingdom and having to live outside of the walls with yeah. the dogs and the, you know. In fact, the Bible talks about it in Revelations about people that are outside of the kingdom. If you're thirsty, come in. That's right. He's done everything for us. But we do have to come in. Well, pride, we have to receive it. Yeah, and not, and I'm not just talking about receiving Him as our Lord and Savior one time I'm, when we get born again. I'm talking about receive Him every day. Get Him in your stuff today. Oh. <laughs> I mean, whatever is going on today, get Him in it. No more keeping Him outside of it with. And two of the biggest things people have doing that in their lives is pride and shame. And um, when we make a mistake, we do really mess up. What do we do? We repent and we run, run. back into His presence and ask for forgiveness. Thank God for repentance. It's that not, belongs to us. So. And it's so easy. Yeah. So if he'll, it were pride and us. shame, the activities of the enemy in our lives, that, it would just be such a simple thing to not just get forgiveness, but then to grow and do better and do better. Yes, so amen. we're uncovering some things because once you uncover Satan's tricks, he's lost his foothold, which if we don't give him a foothold, he can't, I heard, I thought this though, that if we don't give him a foothold, he can't gain a stronghold. That's good, Kelly. So I like that. we're going to rip the strongholds I out of his hand. I write that down. If he, you don't give him a foothold, he can't get a stronghold. Yeah, so we're just exactly. going to kick him off of our proverbial uh, 
climbing. <laughs> no, no more foothold, no more access into our hearts no. and thereby into our lives. And when I say our heart, I'm not talking about your spirit. I'm talking about your mind, your will, and your emotion, in your soul. Um, we need to not let him play around in our soul anymore. So that's what we're kind of uncovering some things. So I wanted to start. I said he can't get a football, but football. I meant to write <laughs> foothold. Foothold. <laughs> that well, works. Well, let's just take that as an analogy. You don't want to be catching the footballs Satan's throwing you. No, you no. Want to be we don't want, we don't want to take that. that. We're not taking that. And you know, honestly, he was throwing some footballs to, he threw something at the rich young ruler. Yeah, Just did. one thing you need to change. But pride wouldn't, pride and shame too, but his was primarily pride, would not allow him to do the one thing. I mean, why would I love it if Jesus said, you just have one thing left to change? Think about that. That's a great position with just one thing left. Without pride. Because mm. he was so prideful about the other things that he was doing that he couldn't hear that he still had one thing left to do, which his pride led to shame. But this girl, I, she, she has some pride cropping up. She's, Jesus starts touching on getting a little too close and actually it's not her pride. It sounds like pride, but it's really shame coming up. She starts changing the subject. She's going to talk about worship or she's going to talk about something else. As soon as he starts touching on her sore spot, you know, mm -hmm. but the entry point that he got, that she gave him for him to continue to ask the right questions. See, Jesus will always ask you the right questions, give you the right leading to um, get you to where you'll receive what he's doing in your heart. So if you shut him off as he begins to lead you down that road. Now you're talking about Jesus. Satan. Jesus is always asking like the next question. With her, he led oh. her one little step at a time. He talked to her about living water. He said, if, you, if somebody had just asked me, it's like you do that I with see. your kids. It's like Emily saying, I want such and such and, and maybe throwing a fit about it or crying about it. And I'm like, if you just ask me, talk to me. Well, that's what Jesus said to her. Yeah. If someone would that's just true. ask me, I could give them this living, living water, water and they'd never be thirsty again. Oh, well, that got her attention enough awesome. to go, yeah, I see well, that. Uh, yeah. So she did the next step, and that was ask him for the living water. Well, the next step for her was obviously she needed to get real with Jesus. She needed to be uh, to honest with him. So he puts her in a place, a crossroads, we said yesterday, to have to choose. Am I going to be honest with him? Am I going to let him in to that next level of my life? Or am I going to oh, just yeah. keep my religious stuff quiet? We're gonna I mean, am I going to just keep my sin quiet cover and just stay like I am and be satisfied with looking good? Because she's, she's posturing here in this chapter like everything's fine. And so he says, go get your husband. She says, I have no husband. He says, that's right. And he, I believe that he was complimenting her truthfulness with him because because she was truthful, he could go to that next layer and begin to talk to her about her life. And right. this, this phrase came to me a few weeks ago, we have to own it for a moment. If you've got stuff. Uh, uh, confess it. Is yeah, you've got, to, you've got to be able to own what's wrong. I did this. Yeah, I did this. I thought this. Lord, I... I I'm haven't, small. you have to be able to be corrected. And when God brings correction, he's loving you with oh, it. Oh, that's a blessing. Man, yeah. he, I mean, I, I mm. want him to correct me at every turn, but I don't think I used to be like that. In my mind, I was like that, you know, but um, I wasn't correctable in the sense of, I didn't like to be wrong. And I so didn't want to be wrong that my insides would begin backpedaling from anything that looked like I was wrong and I would just begin giving excuses. Like, um, I was a terrible housekeeper. I'm better now. But that was a, this is just a natural thing, but 
it was wrong to be such a not a good housekeeper and not keep it. You'd come over and you'd be like, well, Kelly, if you'll just take care of that pile today and that one tomorrow, it'd be all gone. I and tried I, to help. Somehow, I know, but you know what kept me from doing it was pride and shame. I was ashamed. And you can get so shamed that you don't even let people come to your house. And um, you, you begin, and that was just an example of not wanting to be wrong, but you have to give out excuses. Well, it's this, or well, it's that, or well, I have four kids, or I, mean, I, should, I think I tried that one on you, and you're like, you've got four people to go clean up. Get them in there busy cleaning That's up. Right. Take advantage of those That's kids. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so really, I, I did learn this years ago. When God brings something to you, or even in the natural, somebody says, you know, points out some area that you're wrong, don't be so quick to um, make excuses. Yeah, check it out. Now, sometimes people like to point out you're wrong and, and it's done in a wrong way. And, you know, you can roll the care of that over on the Lord. And you should roll care of any of it over onto the Lord. It's a mistake to think your wrongs have to be carried by you. They just have to be acknowledged and given to Jesus and then obey him as he walks you through things. He'll help you. He will help you. But excuses, I, I did, the Lord did this, shared this with me one time and it was all about, you know, excuses about the kids or the house or whatever, practical stuff. But it had a deeper spiritual meaning. But that ex excuses don't change God. God says, I want you to do this and you give him an excuse, you didn't just change his mind about what he said no. to you. No. All you did was excuse yourself from walking in what he has for you. You only, you only take yourself out of the and equation. And you can look up scriptures he, like, the hand of a diligent makes rich. That's true. Good scriptures. It kind of encourages you. You look around, you see all these piles of stuff and you think, that's not me. I mean, I'm not being diligent. I don't have things in order, but I'd sure like to be rich. Yeah. <laughs> so you get diligent about your job, your occupation, your family. The blessing of the Lord is upon the diligent. And he has the answers for everything. It's so much better and easier to live that way. But it's just shame that keeps you from taking God's advice or your mother's advice mm -hmm. or your friend's advice and receiving it into yourself and going, yeah, I'm, go I'm, I'm gonna be different about that because shame likes to cover. Shame doesn't like to admit God. that it's wrong. So this girl though, man, she let Jesus poke through and here she said, I don't have a husband. What did she do? She, for a moment, she owned the fact that she was not doing right. She mm -hmm. owned it. She's like, she admitted it. She acknowledged it. And then what happened? Jesus was there ready to take her from that moment to victory, ready to take yeah, her now she's ready and to lead her forward. down with what she needs to know and understand mm -hmm. and get rid of shame. So he continued to minister to her to the point that she said, oh, she ran to her village and she says, come see a man that told me everything I ever did. So somewhere in his ministry to her, she totally got rid of shame. She goes to her village. She tells them. She didn't tell the whole truth because he didn't tell her everything she ever well, did. Well, maybe but I'm wondering if we, he just didn't write it all down. You know, we don't know what all he told her really if he chose to keep it out. Of, and you know, Jesus is so good. He oh, probably God. like. The world should, doesn't need to know all about uh, what she's been up to, so he didn't put it in the Word of God. <laughs> you know, so the world doesn't have to know everything, but it's important that her heart, I really suspect she ran back to her village and told them herself what all she'd been doing, because she's free. Yep, and when you're free, free of shame, you are free to witness. You are free to tell about Jesus. So it says here that Jesus came to her village for two days because of her. And her whole village got free mm. because of her. Right. So when you own it for that long enough to say, yes, this is what's been going on in my life and it's not, I'm not having it anymore. Yes, Lord, I see you're correcting me. Hebrews 12 is wonderful. Hebrews 12 talks about he is cleaning house. That's what it says in the... Uh, in the Message Bible from 
top to bottom. He is cleaning house, shaking. I think that there's a lot of people going through a shaking right now. Like their life seems like, maybe it seems like everything's upside down. And man, you just feel like there's so much stuff Uneasy. going on. This person, this stuff's coming out. This is going on in my family. This is going on with my kids. This is going on with me. What is up? You know what's up is that God is, in a sense, getting his body clean, getting his people clean, and throwing it all out on the table and saying, and you know, when you when you got a messy closet, it's easy to hide it. You could shut the door. But when you start cleaning them out, it looks bad. It looks messy. You start cleaning out closets. It gets a little worse for a while. It feels like you're not <laughs> going in a good direction. Sometimes when I clean out the, oh, and the garage is the worst. When you clean out oh your my. garage where you've just been sticking stuff, then you end up, you go in your house and you realize, oh man, now I got to clean out my closet. Now I got to clean out it. my kitchen. Now I got to clean out my kid's room because I've been moving stuff from the garage to the place where it belonged. Yeah. And then you feel like you've got to clean it all up too. But when it's all done, what a glorious day. So, so when we shame apply that comes to up, our lives, get, yeah. it all, get it all done. Get it out. Get rid of the junk. Don't hang on to it because of pride or let shame hang on to stuff. You know, mom, this has been one of the best examples of these, this that I could even think of. Do you remember um, you and I were blessed to go to the George W. Bush library in Dallas. We went to a dinner, it was pre-opening. So yeah. the, the library and museum had not opened yet. And so there was a very pretty small group of people that went to the library. We we're gonna have a tour and it was half done. You know, there were big pieces, the, the all the carpet wasn't in, it wasn't finished the governor. yet. Well, the president. The president, So yes. we got there and there were probably about 75, 80 people all together at this dinner. It was really an honor. And so we got there and they're giving tours through the library first the George and the music, Bush library. George Bush in Dallas, giving us, giving people tours and then we were going to go to dinner. So you and I were in a group of about 20 and they had us standing there waiting for our tour and, uh, our tour guide walked up. Do you remember who it was? This has been several years ago. No, I don't remember. It was George W. Bush. Oh, our well, tour I guide remembered for that. twenty people were I just George W. Call Bush. I called him a tour guide. Well, that's what he did. He, he, he gave did. us the he tour us through his library, tour. and he was telling us about such a nice man. Oh, it, it was just a wonderful time. But I think something was deposited in me at that night that. Um, I wasn't expecting anything spiritual, but God really sent me a message that night. So we're walking through and it was right at the time in the Middle East and uh, the Arab Spring. Everybody's talking about the Arab Spring and the fighting and who's going to be, you know, the bloodshed and who's going to uh, step into the leadership in this country. What's going to happen in this country? And this group's warring with this group. And everybody was all disturbed over it. So somebody asked him, um, and I always loved his calmness, you know, but uh, somebody asked him, what do you think about the Arab Spring? And he just looked at everybody and he just had this very calm look and he goes, you know, that doesn't bother me too much. Mm -hmm. It shocked everybody because it was bothering everybody in the news and everybody was talking about it. He goes, that just doesn't bother me too much. He said, freedom is messy. <laughs> That's true. Isn't that yeah. true? He said, Isn't freedom is I'd messy. I've forgotten about that. It's messy for a while. But mm. he said, when somebody gets the taste of freedom, they'll just keep at it and keep at it and keep at it until they get to walk in freedom. And I just, I mean, he was talking about a country. But he was talking about people too and it went off inside of me and now that the Lord's been showing me how to be free from shame and things and we're going to talk you know tomorrow about how shame operates because it's not just the obvious in fact most shame is not obvious at all that you have it you really have to let the Lord dig it dig it out of you and we're going to talk about some of that but 
I thought that's so true. When the Lord, when you're getting free from stuff, maybe something that's, came out from your past and you're like, I didn't want everybody to know that. That's or, what's so wonderful about the new birth. Mm -hmm. you, you, don't, you, you don't just become a, a do-over or you don't get a makeover. You get born over when you make Jesus the Lord of your life and you start out clean slate. You do. Glory and your, to God. your spirit's clean. Yep. You're, as far as Jesus is concerned, as far as the Father is concerned, let me phrase it this way. As far as the Father is concerned, you're as clean as Jesus. That's right. The mistake people make is not allowing Jesus, though, to get in and every day remove stuff that doesn't belong yeah, in your here. life, in your by soul. By the Word of God and by our, the Spirit of God. Our soul is renewed day by day. So the, the hard place is when people are, become resistant, like the rich young ruler, or like this woman had an opportunity to be, become resistant to Jesus' changes, to His wanting you to be yeah, free. Yeah. Honestly, to His exposure of your stuff. <laughs> and uh, I just, that went off of me that day that, that President Bush said that, that freedom is messy. Well, freedom from shame can be messy. It is, it, it just can be messy. You have to uncover And it can feel stuff. hurtful and it can feel yeah. upside down. But you know, we just need to get to where we want Jesus to reveal those things. Oh, yeah. We want him we to want show freedom. us where we have pride. We yeah. want him to show us where shame has been hiding because not only is freedom messy in the beginning, it's wonderful when you oh, come yeah. through it. it when you start the letting the Lord... The blessing. Yes. Stuff starts working and you start being like this woman. She got free really fast and she ran to her village. Her life of impact just began when she let Jesus in her stuff Praise and let God. him have access to her heart and to the shame that is been hiding there. everything. Everything. Kelly and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.